Hey everyone and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down what to expect in January as the weather is expected to change a lot. And the reason why is because we're going into an El Nino winter, which is something that we've not had over the last several years. And what this means is that we're going to basically flip the script with above average precipitation and below average temperatures going from the northern tier of the United States to the southern tier and vice versa for those in the northern tier those areas will see below average precipitation and as well as above average temperatures so what does this all mean well let's preface what actually el nino is and this is a diagram to give you an idea of what el nino does here during the winter time overall in the southern tier we have above average precipitation usually a lot more rainfall happens especially in the southeast areas like florida see a lot more rain and even some severe weather is on the increase as we go into january into february notice over in parts of the ohio valley those areas are usually much drier obviously it has not really been like that in December but it is expected to kind of trickle in a little bit more as we go into January and February and then notice back over in the northern plains back through the Pacific Northwest that is where a lot of the warmer air will sit now that doesn't mean 80s and 90s we're not talking about summer like heat we're talking more like December January and February like heat again winter type heat which might include areas like in the 40s or 50s for high temperatures when you're usually supposed to be in the 20s and 30s that's where we're talking about when we talk about this but notice the polar jet stream it's usually way back up to the north and we've been seeing that for most of december where the polar jet stream is lifted very far up to the north leading to warmer than average weather for much of the northern tier meanwhile even areas down in the southern plains and back through the southeast are still dealing with warm weather but the thing that some people misinterpret is that the temperatures overall are actually below average or around average and that's usually what happens during an el nino winter now let's change gears to a long lost friend something that we've been accustomed to the last several years and that is a La Nina winter so for comparison a La Nina winter has a lot more variation in the polar jet stream and this would be your polar jet stream this often during La Nina's dips a lot more so we see a lot more arctic blasts and cold blasts across the central tier and even the northern tier of the United States meanwhile areas down in the south usually experience drier than normal weather and then off to the north much colder weather usually ushers in on a lot more arctic blasts now I'm not saying arctic blasts like this are not impossible during an El Nino type winter but they are a lot less common overall with all this being said, what does the end of December and January look like in terms of our weather forecast? Will we see a lot more activity in parts of the United States? Will some areas have more severe weather? What does it all look like? So let's begin with the future radar and the GFS model going out about two to 300 hours. Now, this isn't obviously going to be very accurate in terms of its precision with where storms will be, but it'll give you an idea of where the warmer weather will be in comparison to the colder weather and even where the rain will fall more likely than not and even the snow. So this is beginning with Wednesday and Thursday of this week and again notice how there's just high pressure systems dominating across much of the United States this happens a bit more commonly with El Nino where high pressure is more dominant in the northern tier of the United States or back up in Canada where the polar jet stream again is not nearly as variable as what we would see in a La Nina winter but notice as we go into like Saturday Sunday so closer to like Christmas time the GFS goes pretty crazy where it shows multiple different storms but notice the positioning of these storms they are much further down to the south than what we would usually see during a La Nina winter, which a lot of the time with La Ninas, we'd see low pressure systems come diving out of Canada. Sometimes it would be even back up near Washington or Oregon. Instead, a lot of the, what we've been seeing so far this winter with El Nino is that storms have been coming down from down here. So basically south of California. And this allows more for a, even a severe weather potential to evolve with storms that go further out here to the east and like the southeast, the Dixie Alley, that becomes a bit more prominent during this time of the year, especially as we get closer to January into February. On the flip side of things, high pressure is more dominant back up in parts of the northern tier, allowing for a lot less rainfall in those areas. But again, we can still get low pressure systems like this, or even a, a storm or two coming out of Alaska that come all the way down, and they can still bring, you know, snow and winter storms and also Arctic blasts. Those are all still in play during an El Nino winter. And again, notice as we go closer to Monday and to Tuesday, again, getting closer to the end of December, these low pressure systems just continue on this path again 
and mainly in the southern tier in the southeast and even closer to the east coast and this is where i think the weather will be the most active as we go into the end of december and even throughout january i think we're going to see a lot more activity down here in the south and east and i think a lot of the computer models even long term are agreeing with this sort of pattern even though we could see a few storms trickle into the midwest the northern plains maybe even an arctic blast or two those are all still in play and they are likely to happen but it's not going to be nearly as common i think as what we've seen with the last few winters here's the temperature anomalies on the cfs model this is a model i don't use in typical forecasts, but it goes really long term and it gives us an idea of what the temperature anomalies will be across the united states and notice overall the cfs model keeps most of the united states really above average when it comes to temperatures all the way through the end of december but notice as we go closer to january we start to see a lot more of a colder weather pattern start to arise which is definitely in play but i want to mention again this is still multiple weeks out from even happening so things are definitely going to change and by no means is this an accurate representation of what's definitely going to happen but you get an idea at least here that we're likely to see colder than normal weather especially down in the southern tier of the united states as we head into january and even closer to mid-january that active weather pattern i think will start to come in more especially since i feel like december has been a very inactive month overall in terms of weather i think it gets a lot more active as we get closer to january especially getting closer to mid-january here's another look at the long-term computer models on the temperatures and this is going week by week with the cfs model and again notice the temperatures across much of the united states this is the temperature anomalies and again it's a broad spectrum so some areas might not be uh, you know above average in this case but notice again the very red and pink colors that you're seeing this again represents well above average temperatures that are currently happening across much of the united states but as we get closer to the end of december into early january so this is from the 28th until january 4th the cfs model is showing Showing that a lot of that heat and that heat wave that we're currently seeing that quote unquote December heat wave will move further up to the north and we're going to start to see a little bit of cooler weather down near the Gulf Coast on average and then once we go into the second week of January it's more likely than not we're going to start to see more below average temperatures across much of the southern tier and then further to the north above average temperatures will still remain likely especially again since we are in that El Nino trend once we get closer to the middle of the month that's when the CFS model shows the east coast a bit cooler than average again will that actually happen happen again it's a big question mark we're still forecasting almost a month out and definitely things are going to change i can't stress that enough but again it gives us an idea of what we're going to be dealing with basically for january in terms of the weather pattern and then once we get closer near to the end of the month of january that is when i think things will stay still pretty active across the united states and personally i think january will be one of the more active months that we'll have all winter long february could definitely be a close tie with that as well especially since again i think that weather pattern is going to get very active with the heat wave that we currently have on going a strong high pressure system we are definitely bound for more active weather across much of the country and here's also the can sips model this also gives you an idea of the temperatures and this is going for january right now this computer model in particular that's a long range model showing almost the entire country will have above average temperatures in january some exceptions to that would be down in the southeast united states i still wouldn't rule out even the southern plains are in that boat but i think the northern tier is by far definitely going to see some above average temperatures for january here's the precipitation week by week Overall, we're going to still see some active weather, I think, as we go into January. The uh, CFS model also showing above average precipitation, likely across much of the southern tier near the Gulf Coast. That is where I think the weather will definitely be the most active is Florida, where the tornado threat will definitely be a bit higher. And then notice overall, even some drier weather further up to the north across the Ohio Valley and even the northern plains and even really across the entire Great Plains. It's a bit more of a question mark here on what we'll see. Will it be above average? Will it be below average? Well, I think that overall it will have above average precipitation anywhere from the northeast back into texas this area in particular above average precipitation i think is likely throughout january with below average precipitation across the northern tier and as well as the pacific northwest for the entire month of january thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already